So when people first start working out, I know that squatting is a very difficult movement for them and a lot of people don't enjoy it, but this video is going to help with your technique and it's also going to help you maybe enjoy the movement a little bit more. What's going on guys, Cameron Fitness here and if you're new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave this video with a like. So I know a lot of people don't like squatting, this was definitely the case for me when I first started lifting but now because my techniques got a little bit better I've gradually started to actually enjoy the movement. Squatting is a very important movement to have especially when you're trying to build big legs just because it's one of the best compound movements to hit your quads, your hamstrings, even a little bit of calf and core activation. So whether you like it or not squatting has to be included in your training program. It's one of the best compound exercises for improving your overall size of your leg and it's also a very easy exercise to achieve that progressive overload. The main thing to remember is you need to get parallel or below for your maximum hamstring activation. And obviously the further down to the floor that you actually go, you're gonna achieve that hamstring activation for longer periods of time. I know especially with me right at the start, I had a lot of difficulty getting close to the floor because I had very, very tight hip flexors. So I'm going to give you two tips that I included into my squatting program which really helped me improve the overall weight that I was lifting but also the technique in the lift. And I've also seen great results when applying this to clients who have initially struggled with a squatting movement. So let's get into it. So the first exercise is going to be a static stretch and it's going to help improve the pliability of your hip flexors and also improve your dorsiflexion which is essentially the movement of your foot towards your shin. Um, it also allows you to practice your technique points of keeping your chest pushed out and driving through your heels. So you're going to start with three sets holding the stretch for about 30 seconds and then you can decrease the weight load gradually each time until you can hold the stretch with no weight. So typically what happens with a squat is people's chest collapses and it causes you to lean forward to compensate for the weight and that impacts the force driving upwards. So in turn it'll decrease activation of your legs and cause you to lose your form. So this is a great exercise for not only improving flexibility but also practicing keeping upright when in the lowest portion of the squat. So this exercise is very similar to the one I've just showed you. Uh, I'll always do it just before I actually start squatting with weights. Again, kind of just get me into the routine of keeping my chest nice and high, but really just improve the pliability and the mobility of my hip flexors because that's something that right at the beginning of my squats really prevented me from getting as close to the ground as possible. So again, I'll probably do two or three sets of this, holding it for about 30 seconds just until I feel nice and loose and nice and ready to go into the actual weighted portion of the squats. And now for the method that just completely revolutionised my squat training programme. This literally took my squatting technique from um, an average kind of 5 out of 10 to now I'm actually getting some serious depth on my squat uh, and I'm actually getting the most from the technique. As with a lot of people, when I first started squatting my dorsiflexion kind of flexibility was really really poor and uh, this little technique is really good because it, it means you can still squat to the proper depth without actually needing that maximal kind of dorsiflexion mobility. So with the use of these two little weights just underneath my heel, it means my dorsiflexion doesn't actually need to be too good, but I can still get the proper depth to activate as much of the hamstring as possible and for a longer duration of time. The good thing about this little method is that you can actually progressively overload, so gradually increase the weights uh, as the weeks go on, in a safe way where you know you're doing the technique properly, you're getting the most out of the workout, so you're activating as much of the quads, as much of the hamstring as possible. But also over time this is going to naturally improve your dorsiflexion mobility anyway. So eventually you can get to a stage when you feel comfortable to remove the weights and your depth should have improved massively, especially if you follow the two techniques that I showed you previously and combine them all into kind of this squat training program. In terms of results, as I've said, I implemented it into my training program, saw some really good results and I've also now started including it in clients training programs if they're struggling with the technique of a squat or the depth. So I hope this has helped a lot of people. If you're struggling with your squat, then make sure to try and include a couple of these exercises in with your leg day program, just to try and get the most from your workout. So guys, that is the end of the vlog. If you apply this into your leg training program, then leave a comment and let me know how your progression has actually gone and whether it's actually helped you. But I know for me personally, this massively helped with my technique. So again, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you leave this video with a like, and I'll see you next time. Peace.